Don't stoop. Mornings. Fasting belongs to mornings. The word fasting means to seal your mouth. To seal your mouth. To close your mouth. That means nothing enters into your mouth physically. Fasting is the nuclear weapon of God against the enemy. So fasting assaults the devil. Anytime you fast, it assaults the devil. Fasting makes you invisible. Whenever you begin to fast, it makes you invisible. Anyone who fasts, the devil cannot hold you. You become invisible supernaturally. You move on a higher dimension, a supernatural dimension. You won't stop a hope. You won't shake a hope. Fasting makes you dangerous and unpredictable. Anybody who fasts too much, you're unpredictable. The devil don't want to see you. He doesn't want to hear your name. Because what you do are unpredictable. You can, they cannot predict you. So fasting is God's nuclear weapon. And I said that fasting, it only be, belongs to mourners. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me very well. Your biggest challenge in life is not a witch, it's not a wizard. Your biggest challenge in life is your flesh. Your body is your biggest challenge. If you can conquer your body, you can go far. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Jesus said, my spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There is a weakness that will always slow the speed of every believer. And that weakness is not a financial weakness. It's a bodily weakness. The flesh. There is a contention in the book of Galatians <coughs> chapter 5. There is a contention. There is, an, uh, uh, there is a battle going on. That this battle has been. And for us to overcome, we must conquer the flesh in fasting. Anytime God wants to move a man, he wants to take it to a higher level, he brings an appetite of fasting. Now remember, the Bible says that a time is coming in Amos. He said that time, it will be a time of farming. There has been a strong farming at the face of the earth. This farming is not of food. But it is a contest of power. It's in search of power, in search of authority. And before you can get that grace, you need to learn how to sacrifice yourself. Listen, the next move of God, the next revival of God, the next generation that God is going to raise, <coughs> this generation, it will not cost your pockets. It will cost your flesh. Amen. The next generation God is going to raise, it will not cost your pocket, it will cost your flesh. The time is going to come, what you put on is not important. Because our dress is going to be what I'm going to teach you now. The time is going to come, where you sleep is not important. But it's going to be a certain, certain things people are looking for. The world will come to a class of authority. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, that the kingdom of God is not in eloquence. It's not in man's wisdom. It is not in man's ability to express himself, but it is in power. That power there is different from the power you see in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That word, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, for that shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, is dunamis. But where, this power here, it is power of demonstration. You become a dynamite. When that dynamis power comes upon you, you become a dynamite. Uncontrollable grace comes upon you. You cannot be held. You cannot be stopped. But when you come into the power in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, it is a demonstration. Nobody will be ready to listen to your preaching if you don't demonstrate the power. The one who is coming to a place, it has started in the political arena. Talking about those who have power. Everybody is 
doing contesting for power. And the contest of power, people kill people. They kill, they sacrifice blood to get the power. Even in a demonic race, before a witchcraft will be a, a person who will be um, empowered or will be promoted, you need to bring a certain amount of power, a certain amount of blood. As for a Christian, for you to be empowered, you need to raise yourself in a certain level of prayer. And that level of prayer, you must understand the languages of prayer. When you come into the level of Paul, he said, I speak in tongues, I pray with unknown tongue, and I pray with my tongue. The groaning period of prayer. Where your spirit is about prayer. Everything about you is about prayer. When you stand up a day, you don't pray, your spirit is not well. When you don't speak to God, your body is not well. Because the only thing that signals to the principalities and powers at work is prayer. That is why when you fast, it's important to add prayer. Because if you fast without prayer, I told you yesterday, it's a hunger strike. We are dealing with spirits and our battle is tough. Our battle is so tough that you have to be in fasting consistently and in power consistently. Because this battle we are fighting. We have many warfares. I told the last time I said, some of the warfares are different from each other. We have wrestling. We have cave busting. We have street fighting. We fight different battles. But as for a Christian battle, it's a wrestling. To wrestle with somebody, it means that you have to be close to the person, mm -hmm. hold the person. Both of you wrestle yourself. Whoever will go down, the person becomes a defeated person. That is the battle you are fighting now. Listen to who you are wrestling with. You are not wrestling with any individual, people who don't like you. You are wrestling with principalities. Those spirits are in high places. You are wrestling with powers. So imagine that if a wrestler is going to a, the wrestling ring and he is going to fight, they weigh their weights. And according to their championship, they fight according to their ranks. A heavyweight champion will not fight a beginner. You will kill that beginner. What you are fighting has been there since. Uh, the book of Psalm 24, name it better. It says, you everlasting dogs. They have been there everlasting. They are not now. That is why the Bible says, from the time of John till now, the kingdom of God suffer and violent, and the violence shall take it by force. Listen, until you pray and you leave the level of power to become a force. If you don't become a force, you can't go far. You demonstrate to a point that, you see, before you demonstrate, you have to announce yourself. But you come to a level where you, you, you are a force. When they see you, they see, they see the demonstration. That is the level of Elijah. The Bible says, and Elijah was in the form of a man. But he became a force. Even under the passion of men, he was still a force. He said, and the prayer of the just availeth much. That word available, he said, it accomplished a lot. You should be able to come to a place as a prayer warrior to lift up your hands and pray. You just pray maybe for one hour or two hours, and by the time you wake up in the morning, everything is well. Yes. Everything. Yes. Come to a place where Psalm 16 says that the line has fallen in pleasant places. But first of all, what we encourage you to pray is to know who you are fighting with. Principalities, powers, darkness, wicked spirit. You can come to a place where you pray, 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 pray. If you don't penetrate through that realms of that darkened spirit, that darkness can cover your life. You pray and you still ask yourself, did God actually help me? A lot of people are doing very well in life but because they are, they are wrestling. Listen, you are wrestling. This thing we are doing is a wrestling thing. You are wrestling. You are fighting. That fight is a wrestling. There is no gap. You have met the demon. You've met the demon face to face. You are fighting the demon. That is why Paul said this is not about words. Because there is only one language in the spirit. Only one language in the spirit. 
There is, if you go to Hindu, if you go to Muslim, if you go to Obio, only one language, that language is called power. If you don't have that language in the spirit, your sight will be weak. Your hearing will be weak. Power is what boasts the signals. This physical thing we are seeing, we see an antenna. The antenna needs to be, um, to be directed to the searchlight so it can receive what the satellite is, is transmitting so you can have a clear picture. If your power signal is weak, your eye view will be weak. If your power signal is weak, your hearing will be weak. So you have to come to a place so you become a force. A force. You can't hold a force. You can't bind a force. You can't stop a force. When you become a force, you won't break up. And how do you get to, how do you get to that level? First of all, you have to walk in four stages. Holiness, purity, faithfulness, become a lawyer. Holiness, purity, faithfulness, and become a lawyer to God. See, all this fasting you fast, all this prayer you pray, if you pray and you don't have that spirit to become pure, purity, if you don't have that spirit to become just as he is, holy, you don't have that spirit to become faithful, you don't have that spirit to become loyal, you have a problem. So become a force. Or the kingdom of God is not in words, it's in power, in demonstration. Why do we demonstrate? Because the devil has stolen a lot from us. The original you, the original you, the original you used to have dominion. The original you used to have power. The original you were given authority to subdue the earth. The original you had the ability to name things. The original you could have named anything, and as he names it, so shall it be, the original you. That original you, the devil stole it away from you. So now you are going to demonstrate, you know, when there is a law passed in the nation, and people are not in, in connection or in agreement of the law, they do demonstration against it, so that the law can be changed. So till now, before Christ come, both of us, we are doing demonstration. <laughs> That's why we are praying. If you don't demonstrate, it means that you are, you are happy where you are. So the power is for demonstration. You demonstrate to pull your children out of the hands of the enemy, to pull your husband, to pull your everything ahead of you. You demonstrate to take it from the hands of the enemy. See, and when you are demonstrating, you have three levels of demonstration. You see, because you are a force, you have, to, you have to position yourself well to know how you battle this enemy. Because as I said, you are already in the battlefield. You cannot leave this battlefield. There is a place in Isaiah, it says, when you stop pandering them, they will pander you back. That means if you stop beating them, they will beat you back. This place, you cannot stop prayer. Because the day you stop prayer, they will also start praying. In the realms of the spirit, there can never be negative and positive voice at the same time. That is why when you are hearing voices and you begin to pray, the voice you are hearing stops. Because there can only be one voice in the spirit. And you have to come to a place where you would know the levels to pray. The Bible says to us in the book of Romans chapter 8, Verse 28. See, for we know that all things work together for good according to the purpose of God, to them that loves him. We know for that. That one is a sure thing. Then 26 says that for the spirit itself, with much groaning, intercede on our behalf. So already there is, there is an intercession going on in the spiritual realm. For you, when you add your voice to the intercession, you put more force and more demand in heaven 
for immediate and a quicker response. Most people pray about their problem. They don't pray to end the problem. You have to pray by in, in, inserting the word. Listen to me. Everything you are going through and everything you are facing, someone has faced it in the Bible. That means every situation you have, you have a scripture that you can deal and handle that situation with. Psalm 40, verse 7. David said, and I went to the volume of the book and it was written of me. Until you find yourself written in the Bible, nothing can change. That means, listen, if you can't find yourself in the scripture, there is no future because there is no picture for you. Mm. So if you want to change everything in your life, you have to look for your picture in the scripture. If you find your, your picture in the scripture, you can change your future. It is only the physical photograph you cannot utter, you cannot touch. But the spiritual photograph of your spirit, you can touch and utter it by the way. Because all the tools to change how you want to look and how you want to be like is in the word. Jesus had a future. That is why after the fasting, he went to the synagogue, he took the scripture and he positioned himself in the scripture by making his future colorful. See, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It is written of me. When he finished, it is today. What was written of, about me is fulfilled. He closed the book. When you find yourself in the scripture, you don't explain yourself to people. Mm -hmm. People understand you because you demonstrate mm -hmm. what you have in you always come out. Remember the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8 and 9 and 12. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a small seed. He said, I will, see, I will watch over my word to perform. I will haste my word to perform. So anything about you, if you, are, you want to change it, Find the word. Pray through the word of God. The word of God is the mirror of God. When you pray to God, he watch the word and he sees the word. And if he, he can't find you in the word, he will not work for you. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The power of creation attribute worship to the creator see in the beginning if you watch this well in the beginning in the beginning there was no worship in the beginning god said let there be and there was in the book of john chapter 1 verse 1 you find out that in the beginning was the word and the word and the word so in the beginning was the word and the word and the word god have to create something and after he creates that thing then that thing he created we worship him by since in the beginning there was nothing he created it was the word and the word was him it was when he spoke and the things came to be before he started receiving praises and worship. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning was the word alone, God himself. The word went forth. And the word became a living being. Then the word looked back to God and started honoring God. Which means you can never become anything until you see yourself in the word. You must let the word speak to God. You must allow the word to speak to God. So you intersect the word of God. You find yourself in the word and you intersect the word in God's word before God. That's why we have these three levels of prayer. If a believer wants to come into the dynamics of God's grace, you have to understand the levels of prayer intercession you have to intersect the word to god your word says to me you will pour your spirit upon all flesh i'm ready to receive that writing you will use me mightily 
You said, I will be your witness in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. You have intersect God's word to him. God sees the word. He has to give it to you because he cannot deny himself. You know, just as God can worship himself, when the beginning was the word and the word was with God, God could not do anything because there is nothing he can do for himself. He had to use the word to create something so that the thing he creates will now give him the glory. The same way, if you want to see yourself moving the power of God, you must find yourself in the word. You know how I, I went deeper into the things of God, how I went deeper into the prophetic. It's not that I was watching anybody. I didn't have, I didn't, listen, I didn't have any spiritual power. I was too ugly to have a spiritual father. I was too poor to have one. Nobody would father me. No school. You have seen my old pictures. Mm -hmm. If if it was in the days when you guys were sitting and I came here, I don't think anybody would even sit by me. So nobody was ready to be a spiritual father to me. But actually, I was a servant to all of them. Go and buy the food. At the moment, me, when I, I came there to, to come and pray, when the pastors have gathered together, I came there to come and pray. But when they are going to pray, that is when they are going to send me. So I didn't have an opportunity to sit among them to hear what they are going to share. When there is a meeting, they have to exclude me. God, what are you small? What are you about? They never understood what I was looking for. When I come and they are eating the food, and I was ah, Kofi, ah, but you went and you buy it for me. Okay, go and buy it for me. And it was my joy to serve them. Even though I was looking for the grace, it was my joy. So I didn't have a spiritual father to teach you what I'm teaching you now. With time, I have to study it myself. But mind you, the Bible was there, but I couldn't read the Bible because I wasn't good in English. And the country I'm coming from, it's better to learn English than to speak your tree because that language, I can't read in my own language. We pronounce it, but we can't read. It's not easy like that. School is not helping me because at the school where I'm going, this is the school. There is a church here. There is a church. And this church, that's church. I don't, maybe that's the reason why even I'm doing church every day now. <laughs> I started from school time. And in this church here, every day, the people have a service. And they will be singing songs. And when they are singing the song, my spirit is out of the classroom. Send your mighty fire, come down, down. Oh, oh Lord, come down, down. And they use this tambourine in their hands. Send your mighty fire. And the power of God was so much. So when my colleagues are learning, I'm singing song. In the classroom, I'm there, but I'm singing song. So I find out to know that the school was not helping me. I'm paying my school fees, and the school is eating my school fees. So I decided on my own to pay my own school fees to myself, eat the school fees, go to the forest and pray. So I started eating my own school fees. My father and my mother thought I was in school, but me, I was in the forest. I learned something. The sons of Isaac, they knew what to do. They were powerful people. I learned to a point that their mystery of knowing the time in the olden days was to look, was to stand in the, in the, in the sun and look at, the, at the, the, the length of their shadow and they will know that it is 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. When I was going to school, that's, that's my first scripture. Mm -hmm. How will I go home that my mother and my father were not suspecting that I wasn't in class? So I will stand and watch my shadow. I see a little bit and I say, no, it is 2 o'clock. We are closing school. Then I will close from the park. And we all go home together. I started learning. One day I was praying and I said, Lord, teach me how to speak English. If you don't teach me, just teach me how to read the Bible. I want to read it. I'm tired of calling people to read the Bible for me. He said, pick your key Bible. Put English Bible up there. The Holy Spirit will come and teach you. I don't know how to read key. How do I compare the two? He said, don't question me, put it there. One week, I started reading English Bible. The key which taught me how to read English Bible. After I read English Bible, I couldn't read the key anymore. He used the key Bible as a teacher. You can't speak like your teacher. And I studied English. Now I can't read the key. It was just a point of contact to teach me how to read English Bible. 
So the privileges some of you yeah. have and I've had, I never had that privilege. So I learned in time to study the word. And any time I study the word, it gives me revelation about the word. So when I study the word, and I was going to look for a prophet who I can be like. And I started looking for Moses. God said something. He said, all prophets among you, I showed them myself through a dream. By Moses, I speak to him face to face. He said, God, you have another problem. You must speak to me face to face. I intercept the word of God and I challenge God, you have to do it. Your word cannot fail, you have to do it. That was when I was in my room and I saw the cloud come. And when the, when the clouds entered into my room, God revealed himself to me and spoke to me. I was confident. I saw God for the first time after I read the word and I intercepted to God. Then I began to pray for my family, assemblies around me, my cousins. And I said, God, if you save one person, the whole Jewish house are 50 families. If God touched one person, Joshua said, I and my house shall serve the Lord. I and my house shall serve God. At that time, God took over me. None of my family, none of my, my close uh, family were preaching. Except my sister, my brothers, were the pastors I knew. They were preaching. Except my sister, my brothers, were the pastors I knew. I took the word of God and I intervened for them. When I intervene for them today, the least among them is a preacher. The least among them is a preacher. I intercept the word of God for myself. I intervene for them. So what happened is that I intercede for the church and nations. So intercession is for the church and nations. To intervene is for yourself. And to intercept is between you and God. So there are three levels you come into that you can operate in power. You have to intersect the word. Pick the word of God. Show God your picture. Intersect it. Number two, you have to stand in the gap when you are praying for others. You are intervening for them. Oh God. See, Chris has done something and the judge wants to judge Chris. So I know Chris. What I'm going to do is I'm going to intersect and plead on behalf of Chris to the judge who is my friend. That's what happened. I, I plead on behalf of the family. I intercept, I intervene for Chris. And then the judge says, Chris, I don't know you. I was going to sentence you, but because of this colleague of mine, I have left the case. Go, you are free. I intervene for him. Chris, I met Chris, and Chris said, You know, uh, because of what you did for me the last time, I, was, I also want to intersect for you. So he, I'm looking for something in an office. He goes to the office and tells the people and says, listen, this guy that is standing here, he did something for me. If not, him, this office will not be here. And the people at the office says, because he helped you, we will also help him. What he did is that he has taken my words, the testimony of what I did for him, to intersect for me. I intervene for him. He intercept my testimony. And it frees me. The two of us, while well, two or three are gathered in my name, now both of us are going to make intercession for the saint. We are praying for the church. We are intercession. So when we all come together like that, we do intercession for the church. That is what provoked the heavens. But when it is between you and God, please don't talk to God without quoting in one word. That makes you a good dozer. It makes you a false. God, you see what you've done for my friend. You didn't do it for me. You see, this, no, no, no. Take God's word. Bring it back to God. Intercept the word of God. It makes you a force. So prayer has many levels. Prayer has many levels. When a person begins to pray, you begin to develop fellowship. The first level of prayer is fellowship. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I always have my own definition of my own English. Fellowship means fellows in one ship. Fellowship, simple meaning, fellows in one ship. Because 
the work of the Holy Spirit, or working with the Holy Spirit is not easy as people think. And when I receive the Holy Spirit, my life is comfortable, my life is good, I am not having any problem. No, that's not true. Anything that has sheep has storms. You have the sheep on the sea, the storms come on the sea, the heavy waves come on the sea. So anytime you begin to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you must expect storms. The storms of the flesh. The tongues of the flesh. So when you are in that shape of the Holy Spirit, you must face storms in life. But you are always rest assured that it doesn't matter how heavy and tough the storm is, you can still make it because you are not the pilot. You are a co-captain on that boat. The Holy Spirit captains the boat for you. Then when you have the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you come to the level of um, relationship with God. Listen. Two solid grounds of a believer. Fellowship and relationship. May the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the love of God, See, if we want to walk with God, we need to always have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Then we build a relationship with God. Before even you become a member, your first level is fellowship. If the Holy Spirit will convince you to come here. Even though a friend invited you, it's the Holy Spirit, he fellowship with you, he said, let's go. That is why when you didn't want to come, but every time you realize you were here, because he took you into the boat and he started moving the boat. Even though you didn't want to go, you can turn your back and stand at the boat. You can face here while the boat is going here. You realize that the boat will bring you to where you are going. If you don't know where, ask you now. So the Holy Spirit, some of the, sometimes you don't even want to pray. But you will find yourself here praying. Because that is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes you where you don't want to go. And then the fellowship where you talk to God. He brings you and says, God, this is your son, talk to me. Then salvation becomes the foundation of our life. He salvates us back to the authority and the grace. Christ is the only person who gives you the power to demonstrate as a believer. So the more you pray to God, the more you speak like God, the more you think like God, the more you act like God. Prayer is an an amazing weapon. Mm -hmm. The devil don't want you to pray. And it's very funny. God did prayer in such a way that it's easy to pray. That when you say, I will not pray anymore, I'm tired. God said, I hate you. That's what as simple as prayer is. When you even don't want to pray, say, God, are you hearing me at all? He considered it as prayer. So there is no way when you have fellowship with God, your prayer life will be bad. No, when you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, your prayer life will be bad. Because every time He brings you to God, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to put you in the presence of God. Three things about prayer. Prayer makes you a principality in the Spirit. Prayer makes you a warrior. You roar like a lion. Prayer makes you a warrior. The last one, prayer puts you in charge. When people come to you and say, please pray for me, never tell them, me, pray for you. No, you are in charge. God has put you in charge to change people's lives. You are in charge. He gave you the ability to charge and to change things about them. So walk in this grace, knowing that you are a force. You are a force. If you happen to go to the devil's kingdom, there are some names he doesn't mention. There are some people he doesn't talk about. The Bible said, and even the angels, there are some men of God that they are not permitted to talk about. The men of God become false. Like Archbishop Duncan Williams. The man is a false. That man is a false. 
I was with him when I went to Ghana. He is a force. He will not talk too much. He's a force. Just doing this is enough. He's a force. The man is a force. He have got to a level that he doesn't you see. The level he is, that man pray more than four hours every day. More than four hours every day. He can tell you, I will stop you. That is enough. Stretch his hands toward the south, the east, and the west around him. Uh, this area is for power. Nobody established a church in you. No, it's for your own group. Just go. <laughs> now, if even God tells you that go and establish close to him, know that it's a demon. Say, dear demon, I bind you. I will not you. It's a force. Those forces, when you take notice of them, you don't talk about them. Moses was a force. He was a very big force. He's, in, in his mistakes, Miriam and Aaron. Miriam is the one who helped Moses. If not Miriam, Moses would have been a dead person. Mm -hmm. It's Miriam, the sister, who helped to bring Moses out of the place. So Miriam always thought that I have power over my brother. See, God said you shouldn't marry this woman. Hey, Aaron, come, let me tell you something. You see, you see our brother, he went to marry that woman. And God said, they were quoting God, God, God's word to God. What's the, what's the mistake? They were quoting God's word to God. God got angry. King that said, the two of you come here. Why are you talking about Moses? God, are you for real? We are talking about him. You gave us something to talk about. You wrote in your word and we should it. And he has. So yeah, you have a problem. Do you know what God did? He came down. The door to the entrance was only one. When he came down, he stood by the door. He said, You will see where you pass to go out. And God stood by the door and he was watching them. He said, Miriam, you, I can't give you leprosy here. Come out here. He brought Miriam and gave him leprosy, kept her outside. And it took Moses himself to go back and say, God, why are you doing that? And don't do that. Release that woman. And God said, Moses, I'm talking to you. She's free. Moses wasn't there. They were talking about him. And God came down. As for Aaron, we thought Aaron's life is free. God said, listen, I have an assignment for Aaron. I will remove him. I will kill him one more time. Wait. Take him to the mountain. Now that he's boasting, big, 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 he's a high priest, a high priest. I'll show him he's nothing took him to the mountain. He said, remove the garment. He removed the garment from him. He fell down and died. That means the guy was dead. It was only because he was in the ministry. That is why he was dead. Right? <coughs> he was a force. And he died and he was still was dead. You keep on asking yourself, but these people were faithful to God. They serve God. So God, only God forgive the man. No, no, no. If you touch a force, there is no way you touch electric power and you'll not be electrified. It's, it's, it's impossible. So you have to become that prince. Many times in the life of Moses, God will watch Moses. Listen, I've never seen any prophet who killed and Moses. Two people who committed serious killing in the Bible. Moses and David. Their mistakes kill people. You went to the mountain. Now do you know what? You see, that's the problem of prophecy. I can leave you here and go to the room and I'll be talking to God now. Maybe Bible is and I'm not coming out. And people here will be provoked. And ah, this prophet too. He left us, he didn't say anything. Just by saying that God can come there and say, you are in trouble. So why didn't Moses tell the people that you people wait for me here? I'm coming. Or give mercy to Joshua. 
They go and tell Joshua, go and tell the people that I'm coming, they should wait for me. Nobody said anything to them. So the people say, well, maybe the guy is dead. Because we know at the tabernacle, if a priest goes and doesn't come, the person is there, so why don't we form a God for ourselves? It was a problem. God said this before I'll kill them. Moses coming from the man to say, God, don't kill them. Moses came down and said, if you are on my side, come. If you are not on my side, stay here. Let the earth open. Swallow them. The earth open. Swallow them. God was going to kill his people. He said, no, no don't kill them. Leave them for me. <laughs> he killed them and God <clears throat> congratulated him for God that. And so, they didn't kill a sheep. And God said, the kingdom was out of your hands. <laughs> David took somebody's sheep also. God came there and said, David, you are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you don't understand God. They say, leave him alone. <laughs> Tell somebody, leave God alone. Leave God alone. Can you imagine? Yes. Uh, you see, David's own was bad. Because for me, David took somebody's wife and killed their husband. Because he was a force, God sent a prophet to him. When the prophet came to him, he said, David, a man has a lot of sheep. And then another one has few. The one who has a lot went to the one who has only just food and took it and killed. What will you do? So I will slaughter the person, I will kill the person. I will end the person's life. I will even kill the person and kill the whole family. I will end everything up. He said, David, are you sure you do that? I said, ah, I did it last time. Even when you started the story, I started killing them. <laughs> God said, Moses, um, um, David, it's you. It's me for sure. He said, it's me. It's you. It's a lot for me. <laughs> Can you imagine what God will reply to him? I was believing that God should say, well, I will kill you, I will destroy you. Mm -hmm. God didn't temper with him. God killed a son who is innocent. Mm -hmm. And as for David, God looked at him and said, David, what do you want on earth? I didn't help him. What are you looking for? I gave you Saul. I gave you Saul's daughter. I give you Saul's wife. If you were looking for Uriel's wife, you should have told me. I would have given it to you. Ah. <laughs> 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 Is that how you are God? See, I'm giving you, you look the abomination that was caused, but you can't say abomination. I, I wash my mouth. <laughs> he had the wife of Saul. He married a daughter, he married the mother. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's fine. You leave it for God. You don't judge me. Don't judge here. You leave yes. it. Me, I'm not judging. I'm reading the scripture. I'm not judging. So you, if you want to judge it, it's your own between you and God. Yes. But as for me, it's, well, it's fine. He, he did what he wanted to do. And the only challenge that challenged me is that God opened his mouth and said, if you wanted her, you should have asked me. Mm. No, it's, that should have ended. He said, I would have given you. Mm. Mm. And see, God never took away the kingdom from David. What David did, Saul didn't do half of it. But God ended Saul's life because Saul was not prayerful. He was also not a worshiper. But as for David, every minute he will call Nathan, tell him, go and sacrifice to God. Go and give Omar something to do. So every time he's calling God, he's giving sacrifice. You know, an angel in heaven. David's mistake caused 70,000 men to die. That means in Israel, one day, 70,000 widows were available with their children. Angels in heaven, one 
angel came down and said, hey, go and tell them that you should stop mourning and go and intersect. You should go to Onan's field and sacrifice to God because you his mind. You know your, your papa already. Why are you today crying and asking God, what have I done? I will no, go and do it. He went to sacrifice. God said, angels, come home. Then he said, God, you are kidding. We are killing people. We should come home for this. No, no. The guy has given me sacrifice. Come, come, come on. Yeah. If you don't come, you don't come here again. <laughs> <laughs> and they all left and they went. And that was the end of the break. That is the level God wants you to come. Amen. The level God wants you to come is this level. You are able to speak and this happen. The infinite prayer of the righteous Faith. In other words, it prevails. Amen. 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 Somebody say, prayer is a force. Prayer, prayer is a force. Say, prayer will make me a force. Prayer will make me a force. Amen. Just one or two questions then. We should end. Yes. Yes, Papa. You are talking about uh, between relationship and fellowship. But sometimes when you are there and they are thinking of the word of God, in fellowship, uh, in relationship, you're thinking about the word of God, and you, you like you, you say in the word, but to yourself, uh, what what actually is a is a. Let me put this so you can understand it. Fellowship is to share an idea, it's to share common idea, common vision. Whilst relationship is to share your flesh. If we fellowship together, we share ideas together here. But I am in relationship with man. We share not only ideas, we are one. So you are in fellowship with God, but when you get into relationship with God, I and my Father are one. So you have what is in the mind of the Father. You act like Him, talk like Him, move like Him. And that is the level you get to where God said, Let there be light. And He said, Let us create men. In our image, so you get to a place that you talk the word back to yourself. That's a relationship. So Holy Spirit give you the vision, it becomes a revelation. The Holy Spirit give you a vision, so God give you a revelation. The Holy Spirit in, in in fellowship, the Holy Spirit give you a vision, and God give you a revelation. And Jesus said unto Peter, "This revelation is not by flesh and blood." So God gives you revelation. And the Holy Spirit gives you vision. Any question? Yes. Well, the same three things that prayer makes you. One was a warrior, it also puts you in charge. What was the third one? Prince Father. Warrior. Prince Father. Become a Prince Father. Yes. You know how you say that? Um, and um, so, like, if you want something, you go about it and ask him, but you don't go without asking him and talking to the boy, asking him. So, if someone goes and they ask God for something, is it possible for you to get something that is above you? Meaning, like, okay, say Moses had went to God and asked God. Um, for the prophetic gift, but is it possible for you to ask after something that is not within your capacity to have? There is an, okay. Is it, is it possible to ask God for something that is not in your capacity? Now, hear this there is nothing that comes from God that's in your capacity. Everything that comes from God is higher than you, bigger than you. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean. I know that it's not within your capacity, but I mean, <clears throat> like, okay. The, the Bible says that he knows what you're going to ask for before you ask, right? So, if you ask for something, does that mean that he already knew that you would be able to do it? So, is it waiting for you to ask him for it? Yeah, it could be that way. But also, God, every time he wants us to, the reason why he wants us to pray with this word is to ask him in his will. Whatever you ask in my name, I will. And these are two different things. Whatever you ask in my name, you ask in my name, I will 
He didn't say you ask in my name, you will have it. Remember, you ask in his name, he will. That means after you ask in his name, is it his will? So you don't receive what you ask. It is when you ask him, his, the father, he said, everything you ask in my name, I will. That doesn't mean that when I ask him anything, I have it. Mm -hmm. No. When you ask, the administrator go and compare. Is it the will of God for you now? We have two things. Harvest and the harvest time. And this is a problem. If it is a harvest time and you don't harvest, the harvest will rot. It will get rotten. It will fall down. And if it is a harvest time also, there is a specific time you need to pull in the harvest. If you rush on it, it may be a harvest time, but it's not really ready to plant something like a mango. You can see the outside of the mango looks like it's ready, but in the inside it's not ready. There is a harvest time for it. So whatever you ask God, maybe the time, yes. maybe, maybe at the moment, but not the time for it. Most of us here, you ask God for marriage. If God give you marriage, you will destroy yourself. Not only that you destroy yourself, you will kill somebody's son and kill somebody's daughter. Yes, you can ask questions. Because your mouth is like pepper. You will destroy the person from heaven to heaven. You have you, your nerves is bad. You guys can you are quick and bad. You cannot carry nonsense. You, there are certain, certain things you do not you look. You, you can't handle your husband waking up in the morning and talking to you without brushing his teeth. Your mouth is still in it is, you, There is a way you are going to act. You will kill somebody. You will destroy the person's life. So right now, if you ask for marriage, if you ask in his name, he check his will. <laughs> Remember, you guys have to keep repeating the questions like this because it, it goes away fast. So keep repeating the questions. Please. You want to know the will of God? The Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice, which is acceptable and sacrificial. <laughs> so when you ask anything, he takes as well. Is she presentable? Is she sacrificial? She wasn't ready. Keep repeating your questions. Keep repeating your questions. So please, prayer is working yourself out, not really speaking to God. Some of us say you want the gift of God. How many of us want God to use them? You want to right. prophesy, you want to do everything. Right? It's not the will of God. He wants you, but it's not the will of God. <laughs> you keep long. <laughs> the easier you work on yourself, the better it becomes for your request to be granted. Some of us say, if you get the prophetic gift, Man, nobody can control you. <laughs> You'll be beyond control. Yeah, You'll be standing in the bus. You, you are a witch. I see you. <laughs> you are a witch. I'm looking at that. that that's the Your name is this. Your name is that. You will you, 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 you destroy me. Yeah, when the gift came upon me, that was me. <laughs> I will call you right now. You, you, you went to sleep with somebody else, but I saw. Oh. I, will do, I, will, I will create confusion and problem. So it's in the will of God. God wants everybody to be used, but is it the will of God for you? Imagine you at this level, in this need, you've not led to yourself how to. Mm -hmm. Abased, as Paul said, at this level, then God will give you the prophetic gift. When He give you the prophetic gift, He show you people's account and their credit card number. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. You will say you will try. You say, yeah, let me try this. If it works, <laughs> and you try to enter into somebody's account, you finish the person. By the time you finish, you are repenting. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the will of God? I want to be used, but is it the will of God? And these are people who really want God to use them so that they can show to their friends that, you know, me, 
If you do, I'll pray against you, Bia. You are powerful. You are now like cancer. You don't use your power. Yes. Um, someone on Periscope is, asked, is saying, um, I've been asking God to heal my son for two years, and he hasn't healed him. Why is it taking so long? God answers prayer. Um, there is um, there is this. I want a person to be. I want a person to to order this, reorder the book, coming the sovereignty of God. I think by 16th of January to be done with a book. And in this sovereignty, I thought that God does things for His own pleasure. We want it now, but there is yet an unborn believer who needs to be close to see that God can make things happen. God doesn't do miracles just to waste them. He do miracles to grow faith. Number one, God can use his sovereign power to heal the person at any time. Number two, there are certain levels of prayer that you may need somebody to do for you. You, you need to employ a higher authority. Um, the last time when Daniel was praying, um, Michael and Gabriel had to assign for more power to bring the request down. So it is in a different way. But um, the person, I want you to get a number, the 1 800 number, and uh, call the Miracle Africa line. She's wondering if she should come here. She's thinking of coming here. Yeah. Listen, you don't even have to ask. Come to me. <laughs> I will challenge you, and I'll challenge your faith. This God is able to do it. Come, bring your son. We've seen incredible healings, yeah. and the Lord will do it for you. Yeah. We're okay. Yeah. 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 So, Papa, just in, in conclusion, does it mean before you ask something from God, you should be ready to go through a period of kind of torture and pain and a lot of discomfort, especially when you know physically you're not prepared for it? Let's say I'm asking for an aircraft. Maybe two. I want to give you one and keep one for myself. Amen. Um, Amen. And you got it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you one for Papa, for, but no, not for you because you can't do the maintenance. So would God have to prepare me for maybe five years to get a mindset about finance on how to manage money, and then you know maybe then God will say, okay, John is ready. I'm going to release the aircraft. Is that a scenario you're trying to paint? Yes, oh, okay. See, that is number one. And number two is that everything under the sun has an appointed time and is for purpose. That's what the believers don't know. There is nothing for fun. Everything is for purpose. Your house, your car, your life, your movement, your achievement your aim on earth are purpose. They are all for purpose. And it is time that reveal the purpose. If it is not God's time, you can ask him, but you can't have it. And God is good at always giving you something instead of what you ask. Just to keep you, it's called the manner, the spiritual manner, just to bring you to the promised land. He gives you, it looks like what you are looking for, but it's not that. So just as you are saying, the aircraft, he will first of all weigh your strength because a lot of people find blessings and end up becoming a burden. God wants to give you a blessing that will be a burden. But as just you said, that like the aircraft, I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Um, someone has a question. Can you ever see the face of God, or the, Is or it just only the presence, or can you only feel the presence of God? Can you see the face of God, or can you only only feel the presence? Feel the of presence God. of God. Would will you ever see the face of God? And instead of only feeling the presence of God. How does God's face look like? And the first question. So how would you know if you saw the face of God? <laughs> These things are very spiritual and they are very deep. But anytime God
put the desire in you to seek him, it means that he will reveal himself to you. And then the Bible said that God revealed himself to someone through his word. So there are many ways that God revealed himself to us. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. God himself is the word. Listen, please, can I get, let me get your attention here. Listen to this. When you get deeper in God's word, you are seeing God. And there are more levels to go. But you need to get deeper in the word. Yes, you can see God. So I have a question. Just maybe it's a little bit um, the opposite of this question. When I mean, you just said um, God will prepare you before you actually give you an assignment. But what push one is that uh, uh, God come, comes in your life like uh, Jacob and takes you and starts using you like Saul who did not know that he had to work for God differently. And you find yourself, for instance, like myself, this is like something that is really troubling me because four years ago I met God and the way that I met God is just like just put me on this path where I kind of felt like I'll get somewhere, I start prophesizing to people on the street, that just like imagining, like I, I went crazy for like a year where I can hear dead, dead, dead people and things like that. So. And I said, well, how come God did not prefer me that it was coming that way it hard in me? So when you get into that kind of life, you get a little bit confused because you're so lost and there's so much happening. How do you balance that life when you're not prepared, but you were actually being prepared and unconsciously? Okay. okay. Everybody who is called or who has been called always um, trip into the field. And when you trip into the field, you bring trainers to train you. Why do you think you are here? Because he's training you. The gift of God can come upon you knowingly or unknowingly. But any time that God has an assignment for you, listen, you can do anything and everything with a gift, but every gift has a specific assignment. That very assignment, you can't do it on your own. God even will not allow you to do it. He just wants to create an awareness that you have something. But for you to get into the main purpose, it will take training to get there. Like Saul, you just mentioned Saul. He took Saul three days to learn the whole journey in three days. God had to close his physical eyes and cause Amalia to come and lay hands on him to impact the mission assignment upon his life. So when God wants to take a person to a place, God never used anybody without making them sit first. <clears throat> Hear me? Before God walk with you, he makes you sit. From Genesis. And the Bible said, Abraham was sitting under an oak tree. And God came down and started working with him. And the people in the days of Pentecost, they sat in one place, one accord. And the fire came and sat on them. And God moved them. Ananiah, Saul sat down. Three days. So everybody that God will take, He put you in a certain classroom. Your classroom may be serving somebody. But it's all God's potential. Yes. Oh, somebody asks, what does it mean when you see snakes in your dreams? It's an attack. Deception. It's an attack. We will do sometimes. I want God to bless all of you. May He empower you. Remember you to meet ten o'clock today.